All I can say is wow, if you are visiting Puerto Rico, then you have to go to Castillo San Felipe del Moro, otherwise known as El Moro, which is on the northernmost tip of Old San Juan. So in this video, we're going to give you all of the info that you need to know before going to El Moro. And keep watching because we're also going to show you the must-see, amazing footage that we took during our visit here. And if you're new to our channel, Three Days and Tres Noches is not a travel vlog or a travel agency. We just try to bring you real, honest information and reviews that you can use during your next trip. So let's give a little history because I think it will give some perspective around the awe surrounding this structure. So it was built by Spain between the 16th and 18th centuries. So it took over two centuries to complete this massive project. It was named in honor of King Philip II of Spain and it was designed to guard the entrance to San Juan Bay and defend Old San Juan, which was the Spanish colonial port city. Along the way, it survived many attacks throughout the centuries, and the last one was the Spanish-American War in 1898, where Spain ceded ownership of Puerto Rico to the United States. And again, that's just some basic history on this amazing, amazing site, um, which is now a World Heritage Site, and it gets over 2 million visitors a year. Hopefully you've watched some of our other videos of our trip to Puerto Rico, but if you haven't, I will drop some of the links down below in the descriptions. But in one of the videos, we suggest before going to El Moro to have lunch at one of the most famous restaurants in Old San Juan, which is La Vergüenza. And usually La Vergüenza gets really, really busy, so we suggest getting there right when it opens around 11.30, so having a late breakfast or an early lunch enjoying the beautiful, beautiful views. And then when you're done, you can just walk up the street like we're doing here, right to El Moro. El Moro is open seven days a week from 9.30 to 4.30. And I would suggest getting there early and trying to stay away from weekends. We actually went on a Monday deliberately because we knew that the crowds were probably triple on a weekend. In fact, on the weekends, a lot of Puerto Ricans bring their kids here to fly kites because it's the perfect spot to do that. And while we were taking a sunset cruise of Old San Juan the night before, we got to see all of the kites flying. It was really cool. Another tip on how to get there. So parking is definitely an issue in that area, in the old San Juan area. In fact, we didn't even rent a car when we visited Puerto Rico because we knew we were going to be spending a lot of time in old San Juan. So we took an Uber and a taxi almost everywhere. It was very, very convenient and they drop you off and pick you up right at your destination. Honestly, it didn't cost that much more than renting a car. So now remember I said that it's really windy so people fly kites up there. So let's talk clothing because I did see 
a lot of different women in dresses and there are dresses flying all over the place, hats flying all over the place. So make sure you really think about what you're going to wear when you get there. It is a great photo opportunity, but I almost lost my hat a couple times. So just keep that in mind. And also it's very, very hot um, when you're walking around there. So make sure you're wearing loose clothing, bringing a lot of sunscreen and a lot of water. It's only $10 to get in, kids under 15 are free, and sometimes they even have free days like Martin Luther King Day, Veterans Day, things like that, but they do not take cash, so it's card only. But it does include also entry to Castillo San Cristobal, which is on um, the same street, but just down the other end. You are also going to be doing a lot of walking, so it's great exercise, but it's not the time for any cute sandals. You want to make sure you're wearing comfortable shoes and actually ones that have some traction because if it does start to rain, it can get slippery. And that's the other thing too, is that make sure you're looking at the forecast because there are some covered areas, obviously, but I was smart to bring a little bit of jacket with a hood because it did start raining um, towards the end of our visit here. And now it's time for that amazing walkthrough footage. And I didn't want to speed this up because it's just so impressive. So you really get an idea of what to expect if you're going to visit El Moro. And again, make sure you put this at the top of your list if you are visiting Puerto Rico.
And we hope you found this video helpful. And if you did, please like and subscribe and follow us on Three Days and Trace Notches while we keep bringing you real, honest information and reviews that you can use for your next trip.